good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back at Campus Game Fest here at ICD College Central in Amokyo in Singapore for our Singapore Open Top Card. And my name is Matthew Wee. And I am Justin. And we'll be casting uh, the top 8 matches. We saw half of the record being actually decided yesterday. Mm -hmm. One through the actual match between played between the top seed, unbeaten, still unbeaten, Alan Chia. Didn't even drop a game in his top 8 set against Guang Yang Zhe, who fell at top 8, but uh, still a very good, uh, great accomplishment for him. And Knowing Young Sir, he always insists he can't come on Sundays anyway. <laughs> and the other match in that type of the bracket, unfortunately was decided not by, uh, in not in battle, but unfortunately decided by, by the team sheet. Uh, Ayman Ishak from Malaysia uh, making two errors in his team sheet and had been penalised for them yeah, and, and deciding that he wasn't worth playing out his top Yeah, only left with four Pokemon, not much flexibility in terms of team, so he decided to forfeit the match instead. So the victor for that will go to Chelsea, who yeah. will be facing Allen in the semi-finals. Yes, they actually played in Swiss and Allen did win. So we'll see whether Chelsea can adjust their matchup, Indeed. whether Allen can repeat his success. But moving on to today's matches, mm. we will start with the other half of the top eight bracket. Starting off will be a match played between uh, Mohamed Hafiz from Indonesia up against uh, Lewis Fung from Malaysia. Mm. I feel we had a, Mala a Malaysia-Indonesian match as well yes, on stream it was yesterday. Hafiz versus uh, Ayman Ishak, ah. who unfortunately was the player we mentioned who has dropped out of top eight due to the team sheet errors. Ah. That is a bit unfortunate. Malaysia down uh, one of their players vying for the top prize, which has to be mentioned is a Nintendo Switch. So uh, very. Very good price, I would say. As attractive to measure as yeah. it is to us, thanks to certain um, price issues with the switch in our region. Uh, yeah. Turns out it's still a bit uh, more. Uh, it's a bit better to try to buy it online. Although stock now still issues. Though, uh, shout out to our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are here at CGF. Uh, our sponsors are Maxoff, I believe. Among though? many. Yeah. yeah. So moving on, and again, Hafiz, we saw. Had a very dominant set on stream mm. yesterday against the other Ma the other Malaysian player Ayman Ishak, especially since he saw his team take control from turn one in both games, uh, with his, uh, I believe it was his scarf Papu Lele putting on a lot of pressure on the opposing side. Since he clearly has invested in a lot of speed, mm. Scarf Lele outspeeding not just uh, things you expect a scarf Papu Lele to outspeed, but also his opponent's Papu Lele. So oh yeah, some interesting speed differences there. I think there was also the. He didn't. I, I think Ayman didn't really quite catch on to the fact that his scarf lele was slower than than his opponent's scarf lele. Which is an unfortunate error because we do see the terrain triggers yeah. in battle, it which could have been should have been indication to the player whose uh, scarf Pokemon does not have his ability activated. Yeah, and I think because of that, he just allowed his Garchomp to go down the first turn, which set the stage for yeah, it his was loss. Clearly, a very dominating performance from Hafiz. And he will actually go in here with a bit of an advantage since, while well not quite to the extent of our poor Ayman, Lewis did also have uh, some issues with his team. I believe mm. actually he had a Pokemon uh, deemed illegal for use in competitive play mm. and will be going in with only 5 Pokemon. So, team preview will reflect that. There is one slot occupied by a clearly unusable. And I believe Pokemon. the Pokemon removed was the Porygon Z. So, that. That, that that's a Pokemon that can actually provide a lot of offensive pressure and not just that. Yeah. It might be his Z crystal for the team. Yeah, that that is highly likely. We've seen the dual nature, the dual uses of a uh, normal Z on Porygon, either with the Z conversion or the Z break net blades. I believe Lewis is a more conventional conversion based Porygon though. Mm. But it's not an issue. He doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> well, I, I'm just bringing that out because uh, what could have been if he had that? I think he could have a one more way to apply pressure and maybe a bit more flexibility to his game plan but we'll see how so in terms what he loses on flexibility he has to make up in terms of his own plays and his own predictions here yeah because he's going to be limited at most he has one flex slot to play with because mm. he only has five pokemon pool and his opponent will be able to be play more with a greater sense of security in knowing what his opponent has up his sleeve because mm. the, li the one less pokemon or a pool of six means he has that few options. Indeed. And we should be going into game quite shortly as you can see. Um, Lewis's team is the Arcanine, the Nihiligo, Smeagol, Papu Bulu, uh, Porygon 2 and the Hariyama. No, is the Porygon 2 is was the Porygon Z and the Porygon Z is... Oh, removed. Okay. Removed. So, just the... Yeah, Porygon 2 is out of the picture. Well, uh, Harvid's team is Tapu Lele, Arcanine, Buzzwall, Mandibuzz, Nihiligo and the Snorlax. So the removal of the Porygon Z alone itself kind of frees up a lot of the slow Pokemon on Hafid's side, namely the Buzzwall and Snorlax to not feel big damage or giving giving the 
the Porygon Z a setup turn. Mm, indeed. As we go into battle here, uh, top eight, game one, both players vying for chance to make it to the top four, maybe into the final and for the chance to win the Nintendo Switch. And uh, Hafiz has shown a strong preference for leading with his Kaf Tapu Lele. We'll see whether that's the case. It's going to be Smeagol Tapu Bulu leading with Hill for Lewis here. An interesting combination that potentially hints at a Scarf on a Smeagol slot. Mm. Given Nihiligo that and Mandibuzz though. Given that the Smeagol Tapu Bulu, Nihiligo and uh, Brian Z combination was used to great effect by uh, Marcus Tatter. Mm. And he made use of a Scarf Smeagol with Mad Block to allow his Pokemon to set up. Mad block though only can be used on the first turn, right? Yes, so and the problem there is that you, don't, you don't really want to block the many bus because the many bus is just going to tailwind up and all of a sudden, not only do you have a smuggle locked into mad block, you have to switch out and your opponent has double speed. Mm. So, a double bullet doesn't get gained that much from a turn of setup. It's only a, it's only a bulk up and guess what? Nihiligo does not care about your bulk up. Yeah, sludge bomb into Bulu with four times if uh, four times damage. Yeah, but Louis is going to switch out that uh, double Bulu though. Maybe he's going for Spore. Oh, he doesn't Spore the many bus. That wouldn't yeah, be a good play at all. Because of the ability Overcoat, which As most many bars have been comes to in to stat out Nihiligo, an interesting option. Nihiligo uh, goes for the Protect, not wanting to eat the Bloom Doom, or even a Spore from the Smeagol. As Spore does come out into the Nihiligo's not okay, he picks the right target, but he does Protect, and the many bars goes for Taunt, and now Smeagol locked into the locked to the Taunt. Uh, Lewis needs to make sure he doesn't press Fight accidentally, <laughs> because his Smeagol... Yeah, will lock himself and won't be able to switch out, and will just struggle. Will just struggle, yeah. unless he has an attack. Maybe he has Fake Out, in which case, he can still press fight <laughs> because at least the options will be available to him. Mm. But if it is a set like spawn, mad block, after you instruct kind of things, then um, <laughs> transform, etc. No attacking moves, then you better not press fight accidentally. Yeah, and Hafiz having a clear distinct advantage here. Not only does he have the type advantage from the now you have to fear for the Arcanine, which is yeah, it's just open to the double target. And even if Hafiz uh, expects it to protect and is able to switch out. You can use the opportunity to set up a tailwind. Yeah. You, you have to wonder though, if he brought in the Arcanine to replace the Bulu, does that mean he doesn't really have a good way to deal with the Nihiligo? I think it's, I mean it's a clear indication he's got Bulldoze, I think. There's no other reason, but guess what? Bulldoze is affected by... Oh, Grassy Terrain. See, oh. He goes for the struggle. Okay. Try to, maybe trying to break the Nihiligo Sash. But he's... But he doesn't oh, get you the can't choose struggle, can't choose struggle target struggle as well. Targets, exactly. You see the Slash Bomb into Sometimes the Smeagol. Hoping to catch Double Bulu coming in. Not gonna get it. Gets the Beast Boost though. And all of a sudden Arcanine is threatened with a one-hit knockout next turn. Yeah, from the Power Gem. Does we see the Bulldoze come out? There's gonna be Foul Play coming out first. Arcanine not intimidated. Gonna take a yeah, good chunk. Yeah, you have to bear in mind the Tailwind is up on Hafiz's no, side. Hafiz, Tailwind is not up. Oh, no. Let's go for Bulldoze, but... Um, Lewis, you did set up Grassy Terrain. And that is what happens when you set up Grassy Terrain. Ooh, it halves the damage, correct? Yes. So that could have been the potential one he killed that there would have knocked out Because Nihiligo is 4 times weak to... Well, actually, yeah, but he had a Focus Sash. Oh, okay. And I think Lewis was okay there, but uh -oh. Lewis never had a money kill on deck because he he had Grassy Terrain on the field, not which only halves that, Budo's damage. Not only that, what was once a 3 kill is now um, gone because of the Grassy Terrain recovery. Another unfortunate side effect of the terrain here. You do recover all Pokemon's health on the field. No, the problem for Hafiz is that I think he missed the opportunity there to set up Tailwind. Maybe he's trying to get Trick Room up, but his Nihiligo goes threatened by both of his opponent's Pokemon, which are now faster than him after that Budos, because he, Hafiz didn't set up Tailwind. Yeah. So he it's slightly incentivized to go for Trick Room, but I don't think he's going to get it. Oh, then again, Lewis can't Budos either. He'll kill his own, he'll damage his own Nihiligo. Nah, the Grassy, yeah, terrain, the grassy terrain, terrain should protect yeah. him, but we have seen Pawn coming out from the Mandy Bus. Uh, Did we see on the, the Grassy Seed on uh, no, I, I believe not. there wasn't any Oh, Hafiz is going to protect Nihiligo. I think he's going for the Tailwind here. And there's no way to really to deny it. Yeah, As Power Jam comes out. So no Trick Room, just Ooh, going for Straight Damage. Into a non-boosted Mandy Bars. It's going to hang close, on. But not it's going to be life fight, but Arcanine can finish it off here. But Mandy Bars just goes for the Snarl. Revealing it is faster than Arcanine. Or oh, Arcanine going for the Raw maybe. That, that would be interesting. That doesn't sound right though. No, oh, just Arcanine is slower. So yeah. It is just slower. Any bus gonna hang on? Uh, ch uh, just just barely. Just go for there. But now Nihiligo on Lewis side has lowered special attack, while the one on Hafiz side has increased special attack. Yeah, and, and you can easily just pick up a kill on Arcanine and just uh, snowball from there. Just roll through. Uh, Tapu Bulu is not gonna survive a slash bomb from a plus two Nihiligo. So. And now I believe he is out of range of getting to it, to it knocked out. Or from the Bulu. Still is because the Nihiligo can still double up even with the. Lowered special attack might still be enough to finish off. Yeah, uh, the Hafiz's uh, Nihiligo has been affected by uh, now. Uh, yeah, no, not only that, the reduction in speed by the Bulldoze. 
He hasn't been hit by Oh, yes. Yeah, Tap is. He is the slowest, but just goes for the Slash Run to pick off the Tap mini bar. Gets his own Beast Ghost right. to reset his special attack to neutral. That's. <laughs> but he still cannot boo though, so he's gonna Snarl again, I think. But Snarl's not, not gonna save up, can I? Uh, he's just gonna go for Snarl. He does connect at least. So Maybe he can take survive the a minus uh, neutral? I don't think so. Okay, first Power Jam coming out from Hafid's side. Into the. Uh, can I take in the foul play already? That's a KO, uh, can I? Oh, he's oh, gonna oh. hang on though. No berry? A sort of Vesta, I think, Vesta, likely. Uh, I, yes. That explains why he survived the power jam. So, so Hafid, Hafid's had that scuff lately, now is the time to wreak havoc, I think. Yeah, he's only lost one. He has only. Re he's only been playing with his leads. He hasn't swapped in anything. And we yeah, yeah. Scuff, Tapu Lele. Nice call there. Hafid's Tapu Lele hits the field. He's gonna switch the terrain. No, no, no more recovery for everything else. <laughs> more vulnerable to Budos, but I don't expect Akanine to stick around. A Dazzling Gleam is gonna pick up the Akanine. Damage to Nightly Go and allow. Hmm, actually, definitely not the best option, but if he, if he goes for Psychic into Nihiligo on Lewis side, he potentially lets his Nihiligo go down to a Budos. I think you... I think you take that risk, but... Go for Protect, though. Yep. I think he has to Psychic the Arcanine, actually. Goes for Psychic into Nihiligo, and he's gonna lose it to the Nihiligo to Budos. And here's his Ooh. Budos. Without Terrain, he's gonna lose his Nihiligo. Uh, just... I just nice. <laughs> With the critical that hit. didn't matter. I... I, I, I'm hoping Hafiz realizes the Grassy Tain's interaction with Budos. I'm beginning to wonder if he doesn't. So he thought that he would be able to take the hit Yeah, based on the previous well. hit, because huh. that was Grassy Terrain, but now he's in a bit of trouble. Oh, well, he does still have the speed advantage with the Tapu Lele. And does he have speed advantage with Buzz Wolf, though? Oh, wait, wait. There was a Budos, so Tapu Lele has reduced speed. Oh, he's in trouble. Hafiz kind of falling into a really obvious protect Budo's play. Louis is oh. gonna retreat his Arcanine. Gonna be intimidated for the buzz for the buzz wall. Remove that psychic boost. Uh, and yeah, remove the psychic terrain. And Hafiz is playing himself to a situation where he should never have been in. Puzzle going for the protect. So I'm asking to protect himself against this round. As Slash Bomb goes into the lay as he should. Yeah, the scarf uh, the uh, negated. Orb, gonna take out the Tapu Lele with a neutral special attack. And now Hafiz has essentially Gone from a commanding position to uh, a lost game one. Yep, Luis now with the plus one nine illegal and the life orb is pretty scary. Uh, I yeah. I have to think that Hafiz forgot about Budo's interaction with Grassy Terrain. Because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make sense for him to leave the Nihiligo open to the Arcanine when he knew it was already slower after the bu the initial Budos. And I, I think the secondary effect of speed also came into play. I think maybe he didn't pay attention. Yeah, he forgot that Lei would get lowered as well. By yes. taking a hit. So even if he's uh, Nihiligo survived, he's still in a terrible position. He can't switch the Lele out anymore and his scarf yes. advantage is gone. Do you see a slash bomb? Which means that Smegok can just come in and spoil everything later anyway. Mm. So Hafiz... Not only that, okay, maybe he got lowered into a false sense of security because Nihiligo is naturally faster than Arcanine. But he forgot to factor in that his Nihiligo has taken, I think, two bulldozers one. or one bulldozer and is no longer faster and no longer able to kill the Arcanine first before Arcanine can get off another bulldoze. I have to say Hafiz made an almighty mess of the game mm. after such a strong start. Yeah, he, he definitely had the advantage in the start but the Arcanine bulldoze really turned things around and surviving that power gem from a, I believe a plus one Arcanine, uh, Nihiligo? No. Yes, plus one Nihiligo. Uh, oh, was it oh, yeah, it was Snout. It was Snout. So a neutral but still quite impressive and hanging on with just a sliver of health there. The other strange thing there is that if he had gone for a critical mistake, he might have turned the game around. Louis? Uh, no, uh, Hafiz on the Nihil Eagle. Yeah, because he could be able to turn the, his then he reduced speed to an advantage. Because then he could bring Buzzle in under Trick Room, ah. as opposed to having to bring Lele in and for immediately forfeiting the speed advantage by getting Bulldoze. Yeah, so, well, uh, Bulldoze are getting here coming in the clutch, so it is up to uh, Hafiz now to try to adjust. It's really strange because I think Lu I I to me, I think Louis telegraphed the Budo's Arcanine by standing in it in front of a Nihil Eagle. And then he, he, and, he, and then he messed himself up by the grassy terrain. terrain. Yeah. But somehow Hafiz just overlooked that little in fact. I hope, yeah. he, I, hope I really hope for Hafiz's sake he doesn't think that crit method. <laughs> I, I okay, I honestly I think the Bulldoze damage is really secondary. What's important here is the speed control. I oh think yeah, speed no, no, no. is going to be very important. The, speed, the damage is not secondary when the Nihil Eagles are on the field. Well, Akanai's I mean, yeah, yeah, primary but the reason for being on the field in the first place was to bulldoze for damage. That because he had no more efficient way of taking out the Nai Eagle based, based on how the team is constructed. Mm. Hariyama perhaps gives him a better option, but Hariyama suffers against Tapu Lele. 
Arcanine. To a certain extent. But you, you do have to concede that the speed did help in the in the Lele. You take away that scarf advantage that uh, it has. But it was all it was all just a bonus, I think. Mm. And Huffy just let it happen. <laughs> it wasn't so much primary uh, objective from Bad mind also, Huffy's had the many bars. He had options to set up tailwind. Yeah, he chose not to. The Fox on Smegle was excellent. But then he just made questionable plays to to follow through. Yeah, I think what was it power play on the Arcanine? Taunted more, more? And the Sludge Bomb into the Smiggle slot? I think that was fine because you pick up the kit, you Not pick up a Not really, the most likely switch in is the Naive Eagle. Okay. So I mean, you want to catch a Bulu, but Bulu's not coming in. So perhaps you prioritize the Arcanine now? You, now you know that. Um, AV, yes, it cannot protect. You should know that, yeah, not only that, it doesn't have the recovery, so every bit of damage will count in bringing it down. Yeah, well, there's Grassy Terrain. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's Grassy Terrain, then Naive Eagle's staying alive, so I guess yeah. it works out. Should be pretty clear to Huffies now that not only does Arcanine have the Assault Vest, it also has a lot of attack investment based on how much damage Fudo's was doing. As Hariyaman in Nihiligo makes hit, hit the few for Lewis. Okay, so no Smurgle. Uh, As Nihiligo and Manibus hit the few for Huffies. Yeah, so no changes in the list for Huffies. He feels that he can have the advantage. But Smurgle being replaced by Hariyama here brings, brings a bit more offense to the table. A lot more offense to the table. I, I believe even though Nihiligo is uh, resi uh, neutral to the fighting, um, his Takes defense a ton of is damage, yes. yeah, his defense is not. Though as we do know, it does carry the focus dash, but a uh, quick fake out would fade that. Not only that, faint as well could could just go through the protect. For without anything to double to double up into the Nihiligo slot, since Ni Nihiligo cannot KO opposing Nihiligo, not even if you don't bubble ground. Mm. So. I go fairly safe, but you might get faked out, and the mini bus also an open target for pick up because, I mean, the obvious switch there is uh, Nile go out to Tapu Lele to both give mini bus the seed boost and to stop the fake stop out. Fake out, but mini bus can still get faked out because it's off the ground. Yeah, I, th I think Hafiz, if he switches, will be no switches. Position. Touch bomb into the Nile go or into the mini bus. Good what? amount of damage. He's gonna double up with a close combat, but without the guts boost, touch bomb into the Hariyama. Yes, yeah. it's a neutral hit. That's still Ooh, a lot of damage. Poisons the Hariyama. Poisoned. Is there a guts, guts boost? Do you see a foul play? That's not going to be enough KO. I don't. I think the poison is going to cost him. The close combat follows up into the Mandy bus with the guts boost. Oh, oh it's, it's going to be a knockoff. Knock okay. Oh, it's going to be a lot of damage thanks to the poison, though. It does, it does show the focus sash there. Will it be enough? No, it's now in range. Yup, it is enough. The Harrier does trigger his very. So not only did he not. Not, not only is that not flame up, he actually gave him guts. I guess at this point you're hoping that it's thick fan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because if you're not holding a, a flame mob, you don't really benefit much from guts, unless you get situations like this, which are not that common. Yeah, based on the previous, but based on previous damage, the double up again could do it, but that was including poison damage. And this time, I remember he's gonna yeah. hit with a guts boost. A bit questionable also going for slash mob in the mini bus, maybe hoping to cash in a tapu lele switch in. Win, uh, but I think Bulu. I think a, no, I think a power gem would have been better. I'm talking about the Lewis's uh, slash mob into Mandy Bus. Lele does damage hit a few. Though, but now Mandy Bus will have boosted special defense. Uh, but it's not going to save him from close combat. Trying to force Tailwind up maybe? As Power Jam comes out into the Mandy Bus, it's going down. Oh, with the boost. Not uh, going to be enough. Yeah. Not going to be enough. Let's go down. Life Hop, Night Lego just too strong for Mandy well, Bus. Close combat going. <laughs> if he goes for close combat, he's going to the Lele, which is uh, four times resist. Yep. So she'll be able to uh, take that quite comfortably. And it is the close combat. combat. Uh, imagine if that had been a knockout, you remove the scar from the Lele as well. And as well as a chunk of damage. But there's no reason for him to knock off because you don't really want to knock off Manibus seed is not doing much at anyway. And uh the close combat goes into what was a Nihiligo slot, so They're probably going for yeah actually it was the Nihiligo slot since Nihiligo on Lewis side would have finished off with Hafiz Manibus regardless. So Hafiz uh Lele in a pretty good position I have to say. You psychic the Nihiligo which you know is a life off variant. But you still have no way of finishing off the Hariyama. But you could dazzle here, I suppose. Since you would, would take out the Hariyama with, with reduced special defense, thanks to the close combat. I, I don't know. I think and Dazzle will catch a uh, switch in as well, which I is the Bulu. I feel the, the, the Nihiligo was a bigger threat. But, but you can Dazzle game to. I think the Hariyama is a bigger threat. It's poison. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea whether it's guts or not, unless you know your cards perfectly. You see a psychic come out into the Nihiligo Please. slot. So Bulu going to sponge that quite Ooh. well. Oh no, Slash bomb, bomb into the Hariyama. It's not going to be KOing. No, it oh, is. It does. Just about. Oh, with the special defense drop. Yes, yes, yes. Right from the close combat earlier. 
So Beast Boost coming out from the Helicon, not something that uh, Luis wants to be seeing. His uh, Tapo Bolo already does not enjoy and taking a poison Nightingale attacks. healing his way out of potential KO range of Luis and Iligo. And if Luis has Arcanine at the back, you have to wonder why he didn't bring it out earlier. Maybe he is. I mean, you, if he didn't leave Smeggle, you, you would think that he didn't bring Smeggle at all. What, what, what? Yeah, it has to be Arcanine. The Arcanine. So I, I kind of feel he should have brought it earlier because Here's it, the Arcanine. it did so much work. But now... But there's a end game. Now Huffy can right? double out in, into the Arcanine. Yes. Because it's a sort of vested. Hey, if, anyway, if Nightingale comes in, Nightingale just goes down to the sidekick. Yeah, and Hamis could also play it safe, switch out Lele so that he gets the ring control. How valuable is the ring control at this point? Boost the psychic damage, so. But Lele doesn't need the psychic boost to get the KOs right now. Um, I think with a psychic boost, you can kill the Bluff at this HP. But I think Hafiz has Arcanine at the back. Or oh, depends on what he has at the back. If it's Buzzwall, then yeah. If it's Buzzwall, I think he needs to preserve his Lele. And uh. there's the Buzzwall. If it's Arcanine, then you can teleport to throw it away, I think. But Buzzwo coming in in a pretty safe position okay. if Bao Jam takes out the Arcanine. But it won't because it's a yeah. top vested. With a plus one, still not quite enough. And uh, Kudos oh. will come out and not kill the Night League based on what we saw previously. Low is on Bubu's attack uh, uh, speed stat. Yes. Buzzwo getting a speed drop as well. Buzzwo taking absolutely nothing from the hit. What does uh, Bulu go for here? Does he kill the Night League? I hope he didn't go for Bulk Up. That would be a waste of a turn. Goes, Goes for Hot Leech into the Buzzwo. Into Night League. Not going to heal much at all. But removes Night League from the field. I don't think he wanted to remove Nightingale at that point though. Yeah, Lele so gets a switch. for the Lele, yes. resets the terrain. Now, I think Bulu has to switch out to get the terrain back. And that is easily punished by a Psychic into that because the only mod that can come in is Nightingale. Nightingale. So Nightingale. Go down to Psychic Even if well. Hariyama switches in, Hariyama is weak to the Psychic as well. Hariyama's down. Yeah, I'm saying if. Yeah. So, the Psychic, I think, is a pretty safe uh, slot. A safe yeah. attack into that slot. Ooh. But, uh, but now he has. But now Bulu. But Basu was outsped by the Arcanine. Which means. Flablets? He's gonna eat the Flablets on the slot. And we know his and based on what we've seen from Louis Arcanine, he's doing a lot of damage. Hmm. I I'm not too sure, but I think Buzzwell's box should be able to take a Flablets. It should, and Arcanine will kill itself, but it means free damage on Buzzwell for kind of no reason. And allows the, the, the blue to protect. And get Nightly go in to force another situation. So actually. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, Luis, I feel, has to switch if he wants, if he really values the grassy terrain because Arcanine should be going down this turn and if it, that, that happens, he won't be able to switch out his Tapo Bulu anymore. I mean, oh. it all comes down, I think, to how much damage the Arcanine's Flablitz does to either of Buffy's Pokemon. Saki no coming switches, out into okay. Tapo Bulu, surely? No, no, goes into the Arcanine. I think he expected the blue to switch and this could be Luis's opportunity, but I don't think Antolish would be enough without terrain. Oh, oh yes, the Poison Jab on Buzz. Oh. That will be an easy KO on a damage Tapu Bulu. Four times weak. So, Huffy is confident in outspeeding Luis Tapu Bulu. So, perhaps the speed invested in Buzzwo. Uh, well, since both of them took the same yeah, card, correct. The Budos. So, in terms of speed, both of them should be. Budos, uh, Buzzwo does outspeed Tapu Bulu in terms of base stat. So, Huffy is clearly confident that in his ability to outspeed there. And Luis, low night he'll go here. Yeah, it's going to be the win for Huffy here with the Scarf Tapu Lele so We'll be going into a game 3 here. It's strange because the adjustment seemed to work for Lewis at the start, but if his guts, he didn't make use of the guts enough. I, I guess um, he, he, you can't really blame him because, yeah, because close, close combat, combat lowers your defenses. Yeah, and we saw how much it hurt. And him. close combat was into the Nightly Ghost slot, which Hafiz cleverly switched out to bring in Tapu Lele instead, so you can't really blame him. But what I feel Lewis could have done better was utilize the Arcanine a lot more. We, we saw that he brought it, but it only came out at the end. And against a boosted yeah, Nightly Go. It didn't really accomplish much. Whereas in the first game he won. The Bulldog was Arcanine so early. dominant. Yes. The Bulldog was so dominant taking out the Nightly Go, controlling the speed on the field. And you were able to ensure and the Snow as well, you were able to ensure that Nightly Go wasn't always wasn't able to pose a threat to your Arcanine at any point in the game. Yes. Whereas in game two it was like, oh it's a plus one, oh it's power jam does eat ninety percent, oh your Arcanine is down. I, I do see the value in preserving the Arcanine because with the intimidate you can sort of uh, reduce the attack from the bus wall by switching in. But I, I feel that Budos, um, the advantage Budos has is outweighs that a lot more. So he should lead it, I think, a lot earlier. And Arcanine has a pretty good bow as seen with the Assault Vest being able to take a plus one power gem from the Nihiliko com quite comfortably. The other question is how the game 2 ended. Because we saw the Basso went for Poison Jam into Tapu Bulu and outspent, whereas Arcanine went down to a Sky Psychic. Yes. So let's say you reverse position and you switch Tapu Bulu into the Nihiliko. Yep. 
the Nilego is the person jab no problem. Yes. And uh, Psychic takes power down. Yes. But now Blue comes in, sets terrain. Blue is no longer threatened by Psychic, which forces Poison Jab into that slot. And Nilego is still around 70%. Without terrain, Psychic might miss the KO. Yeah, Nihiligo's special defense pretty good. Depends on how much uh, special, special attack uh, Tafis has on his Tapu Lele. So yeah. that was one scenario he could have forced, perhaps a better approach. Especially since now he knows the Basso is faster than his Tapu Bulu. Yeah, and I believe he's but he had to have known that though. He's because he himself already knows whether or not he invested enough speed in his Tapu Bulu. Mm. And he has to know that Basso is also a faster Pokemon. Well, regardless if he didn't know before, he knows now. So with that information in hand, how these players adjust? Although, I think Hafiz has a lot more wiggle room to adjust. He brought the bus world this time, which I think was Hafiz is big. probably like, feeling bad good about this because his many is consistently doing kind of nothing, but he's still pulling it out. And the threat of the many bus always means that Lewis has to think twice about leading Smeagol, which is the biggest threat I think in yeah, terms of disruption spore. to the rest of Hafiz's team. Ah, uh, sorry, what's for Ton? Sorry, and um, Smeagol spore can't that do much said, to Scarf Lady should outspeed well. Scarf Smeagol, so that's an easy knockout there. If Hafiz chooses to take it, okay, we'll see. Which is why I think he lets Smeagol Bulu in game one to get the terrain control. Hmm. Will, we, will we see Smeagol again? Since it worked for him, kind of worked for him in game one. And no, it's gonna be Hiram and Illegal, so going what he tried in game two didn't really work out, but he did have a v decent start. But Arcanine uh, Lele gonna be the adjustment, and oh my, this is not the lead that Lewis wanted to see. <laughs> Intimidate going dropping onto the Hiram immediately, since we know he has no way of uh, boosting his own stats with uh, Flame Orb. Yep. And Psyche immediately threatening the Nihiligo, which we know is life up and does not have. Psyche really does stop any fake out as well, although can be easily adjusted if Lewis decides to bring in uh, Tapu Bulu. Oh but wow. switching that in is terrain and faking out is a kind of a terrible play. Yeah, but I think he has to, he has to try to minimize, otherwise Hafiz can just easily punish by something like a Flare Blaze into Nihiligo's slot, which could catch the Tapu Bulu switch in. I don't think Tapu Bulu wants to switch to a Psychic either. Yes, so it's difficult here. But even if he, if he Tavis doesn't target, switch... Target, Tavis has to target Nihiligo Slot with Psychic though, because Slash 1 would kill his delay in return. We saw the damage on to Bulu with the Psychic earlier. Uh, that did, uh, did only about 40%, so I think a Bulu change should be relatively okay. He's gonna switch okay. out. Throw his uh, early advantage away, it goes for the Buzz Bowl, Which, I suppose it looks good against these two, but if Bulu comes in... Oh, it, I think he's calling the Bulu switch in then. And it's gonna be Bulu. Okay. So Buzz Bowl immediately coming in to stare down the Bulu, a very good position. <laughs> and Arcanine, free to fire off a... Uh, no, if he has well always this will be the time. Well, oh no, 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 wait, it could be guts. Please don't. Oh, it is the bulldoze. So no no fake out from the Hariyama instead. You do see a new speed. So it doesn't really affect much. Baso is still faster than Bulu and Hariyama for that matter. Hariyama is really slow. So but Hariyama didn't go for the fake out, so what did he go there for? Oh, knock off, okay. Into Arcanine? Into Baswell, knocking off. We're not gonna knock off anything, it's fighting Z. Well, now Luis knows. Now he should have watched the stream yesterday. And yeah. Grassy Drain just gonna heal back all the damage from the Boodles. Hariyama... Actually, actually everything has been healed back, hasn't it? Yes. <laughs> no damage on the field right now after the Grassy Terrain. Says Boodles onto everything that resisted it. <laughs> Except Hariyama, Hariyama doesn't resist Boodles. Yeah, but the Grassy Terrain does reduce the damage as well. Yes. So and I think uh, it's also a clear indication of how lacking Hafiz Arcanine in attack is in attack compared to Lewis Arcanine. No, he might not even get a 2 kill with Budos on Nihiligo. Yeah, so, uh, what, what, what do you mention? What, what do you say? Why why does uh, Buzz World enjoy setting down Tapu Bulu? Because we saw Outspeed and has, has Poison Jab. Type-wise also, I think it's sort of... Type-wise, uh, it resists Grass. Yeah. And has, uh, has a rather obscene amount of defense. And I don't think Bulu has a Bulu's fairy coverage attack to take Bulu's advantage. Bulu's coverage these days, apparently it's Hidden Power Fire, but... <laughs> Buzz World and Bulu don't exactly have the most stellar of... Spe special stats. Arcanine okay. comes in to intimidate. Decent play. Should keep his Hariyama around and Arcanine should eat up the poison jab. Really yep. But he's gonna protect himself. Okay. And then leaves Hariyama open to perhaps knock off the Arcanine's berry. Yes. Another Budos comes out. Oh, that's gonna be super effective on Lewis's Arcanine. Oh my. Weakness policy, anyone? Oh, look at the damage. Oh yeah. Oh, grassy terrain. Oh my. With grassy terrain. Absolutely nothing. And Hariyama's speed lowers even further. Not that it really matters. Gonna knock off the berry. Off. Yep. There goes the berry. So not much leverage. I, I'm interested to see why he went for that play. I'm pretty sure Buswell was the fastest thing on the field anyway. You have to imagine he was trying to catch something switching in the Nihiligo again. Perhaps, uh, but I not when. But again, the bus when Intimidate is being hit, hitting the field turn or after turn. I think Nihiligo is staying clear. I think 
I think the Budos was fine because if he had gone for Flamlist, that would have been, I think, recoil damage that he didn't really want to take. Although Grassy Terrain sort of makes, trivializes all of that. And so he wouldn't have accomplished much either since the Flamlist would go to an opposing Arcanine. Uh, Lewis Arcanine oh. is unintimidated and I think posing the biggest offensive trend. Uh, uh, what, what again? I think it is going to go for Budos here. No, he has Flare Blitz into the Arcanine slot, until the, until the, until the Basso slot. And I think Harpy is going to double up with the Z fighting. Is it going to be enough though at minus one? Let's see. Okay. He's still slower, even after Budos. That's a very fast Arcanine from Lewis. Oh, actually, what am I saying? The, the the Budo, the Basso on Harpy's side had also taken a Budo. Yeah, so I believe Basso is at minus 2 speed, whereas uh, Lucius is, at minus, is Basso only is at minus, minus one. 1. Actually, no, both of them are minus 1 now. Since okay. Basso protected from the second And one. as you call it, the Fighting MZ, but will it be enough to KO the Arcanine at a minus 1? I kind of worry for Harpy's. He's kind of making small errors about speed, num speed and stretch drive. Because I think he forgot that his Basso had already taken a minus 1 when he protected there. I think he expected to outspeed the Arcanine, but luckily for him, Lewis didn't go for Flare Blitz. Yeah, unintimidated. Should do a big chunk. He is intimidated. Uh, Luis's is not intimidated. He's in uh, Harpy's ah. uh, buzzword. But he's going to take out, take it out. That's how strong buzzword's all-out pummeling is. And we'll be back to neutral attack with the Beast Bulls here. Okay, knock off once again. This Hariyama is not really accomplishing much. Facing down Arcanine and buzzword is not something you really can take out in a single hit. This, is, this turn has been a net gain for Harpy's. Yes, for sure. Uh, I have no idea. Why, why, why do you think Luis went for Budos there? Uh, oh, I think he had to he had to think that Hafiz was going to switch the Basso out. If you're expecting a switch in like a Lele, Nihili go. Oh, Nihili go. Either Nihiligo. one, right? The speed the speed reduction would be pretty. No, pretty Nihili go. Nice. You just want the damage. Yeah, yeah but you're not going to kill in the grassy terrain, so. Not it's even still the it's still the mo it's still kind of the hardest hitting attack he has against Nihili go. Since his his double blue is reviewed on Leech. I would argue that Hariyama's close combat would do a huge da huge damage to the Nihili Go, but but leave it open to the revenge yeah. to the revenge KO. Not only that, you currently right, you don't have the flame orb to boost your damage. You are intimidated. You are intimidated as well. Power Jam comes out into the Arcanine, it's gonna okay. pick up a KO, life orb, gonna get a beast boost. Half is letting it slide, confident that his uh, his Lele can come in for free. Yeah. As Basso has a free neutral attack super power, which might just take out Nihili Go after life orb. Likely. He likely. has super power. Into the Nihiligo slot? No, into Hariyama. Oh, into Nihiligo. That's a, that could be a KO. And it is. Yes, it is. Neutral, but doesn't matter. Basso no. has been hitting the gym. However, Basso now down to a minus one attack. Minus, mi could she minus one defense for whatever Hariyama is going to use this turn? Let's please not see another knockoff. Oh, no. Knock off. Why? I I don't know. He, he The only logic is that he's perhaps trying to catch a, a switch in. Yeah, Lili he wants to catch in. a Lili. But, but, but why is Hafiz, why, why would Hafiz switch in? Harpy is clearly happy to give him the chaos, get his free switches, free switch in. Yes, and he clearly re he clearly recognizes that Hariyama poses no threat, intimidated. Um, and now it's permanently intimidated. Yes. Not only that, a bit okay. No tapu lele. Instead, a Snorlax will come That's in. That's a for rather bizarre adjustment for Harpy's. Well, Hariyama, you get your reward after all. But yeah. now that you've been intimidated for once, uh, yeah. perhaps not the, the not what you're looking for. Basso will reset his attack to zero again, right? The beast boost? Yes, correct. Superpower does lower its attack and defense. With the beast boost, it is back and neutral again. <laughs> Still at full health because the yeah. Gunsy is, is offsetting all that knockoff damage. And uh, Poison Jab here could be huge damage on Bulu, but. Probably doesn't KO. Probably doesn't KO. Bulu Basso, has huge defense. Basso, I think, is slower now yes. than the Bulu. But what can Bulu do to Buzzbo? Um. Good leech. question. If only he had a fighting, fighting, a fairy step, something like the Play Rough, but unfortunately, he does not get that. Huh. Will not get it. <laughs> <laughs> Crucially. Will not Goes for Bauka, but okay. Well, um, hoping to survive a poison jet. He will survive poison jet even without Bauka. Because the previous time we saw Bulu go down to poison jet, he already taken prior, prior damage. He should do around 60%. Hey, that's a lot of damage. Oh, actually, might have gone down to a raw. And double edge coming up from Ooh, Slice here into, into the Hariyama, Hariyama but okay. no reduced defenses yet. I feel Knock like once again. Hafiz okay. should be resetting his Buzzbow's speed by switching out? By switching it out. But no. again, the danger of getting a Lele to get free damage is the problem. Yeah, and I think But now the thing up here is that Hafiz no longer needs the Scarf on Lele. He's, yes. gonna, he's gonna be the fastest thing Basso in the is already the fastest thing on the field. Grassy Terrain does wear out, so there is no recovery. So if anything, you want to leave the Snorlax there and try and rotate the other mons in, in and out. Not only that, your... Okay, Hariyama has been intimidated, so your Snorlax um, bomb is sort of secured. Not in, I was gonna say, okay, it does have... It did have the berry, but that was knocked off earlier by the Hariyama. Hafiz... It's just putting some like that as a pure damage meal, I think. 
Yeah, so, uh, power damage is punch. At this point, Hafiz he will be happy to just trade Mons. Okay. We do see a fate okay. coming out. Uh, I think he expects the Karima to go down to a uh, superpower. Oh, oh goes for the Horn Leech. Okay, That's so Basso is actually slower. Uh, it is. We saw it be slower because of the Burg Duels. Oh, right. Correct. What am I saying? Poison Shape is going to KO. And um, I think Lewis hoping to heal more than that. Not going to be enough though, and Blue will go down. Yeah. It's going to be a minus one Harima up against uh, Tabo Lele at the back, and that will be game. You have to wonder if Grassy Terrain was up, I think he would have healed a lot more and perhaps be able to survive. Unfortunately, the terrain does expire. and uh, But the problem for Lewis is that he's forever up against it. Uh, what do you mean? Even with Grassy Terrain on the field, it's only a matter of time because Tabo Blue's bulk up only increases defense by one stage. Uh -huh. And Poison Jab starts at. Essentially, Poison Jab starts at 100% damage. You cannot hope to out-heal that. At some point, Snorlax is gonna die. Mm. And, and there goes all your free healing. And you're still staring down the buzzword who resists your grass attacks, and at some point, Grassy Terrain will expire, and all of a sudden, Lily is back. Okay. And it would have been game. So, Lewis, again, I think it brought down to not playing the Arcanine optimally. Yeah. Uh. This time, his Arcanine came in Budos and got KO'd. That was <laughs> not optimal at all. My healing goal also, uh, just, I have to say that uh, MVP for the third game here would be Basuo. Hafiz actually made a very good adjustment in dropping his own Nahi Ligo. He saw it wasn't doing much. The damage yeah. wasn't enough to get through the uh, Assault West Arcanine. And which was threatening it back with Budos. And the, poisons, uh, the poison attack that he needed was already, could be done by Basuo. Yes, which, which outsped the Tapu Bulu anyway. Yeah, so and, and putting a lot more work in terms of the opposing Nahi Ligo with its own superpower. All the fighting DMZ which took out the Arcanine, I believe, at a minus one attack as well. Yeah, yeah. So huge damage. Throughout 70 to I think 70 to 80 percent on the Arcanine. Yeah. He knew he knew the damage he could get on the Arcanine. He was very confident when he threw it out, got the reward he wanted. Yeah. Moved the Arcanine from and the And after field. the f after the first two games, figured out that uh, Arcanine couldn't protect because of the assault vest, so was pretty confident to fire off that uh, Z Crystal move as well. That being said, though, yeah. the Arcanine was still faster. Could have gotten a Flare Blitz off. Chose to go for Budos. Uh, I I kind of this wanna time wonder. And this time, let's not forget. Let's not forget. The prime, the prime target, what they wanted for the Budos, was Harvey's didn't even bring it. Yeah, no light in game three, yes. no Nidego in game three at all. But I don't think Flare Blaze would have killed the Bus Wolf. Wouldn't, yeah, yeah, but damage is damage. Oh, what if a burn happened? Oh, oh if got burn it exactly. <laughs> okay. Instead of Budos, why Budos? Yeah, I think Lewis was was looking too far ahead. He was hoping to catch switch ins. He kept that trying to catch switch every turn. That didn't Knock happen. Off into 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 static slots. Yeah. Budos into static slots. It was. It just wasn't happening. A bit bizarre to see, but uh, and, and those those turns just gave more momentum to Hafiz, and uh, yeah, Hafiz Snorlax. It's like I'm intimidate. I'm gonna get my beast boost. Uh. I super power. I'm gonna get uh, my beast boost back again. So I'm still at neutral attack here. Yeah, and yeah, I mean the Snorlax didn't really accomplish much aside aside from just sit there and just draw attention. But I think that's what Hafiz wants. And at that point, he was already three mods up to the two of Lewis, so he could afford to try to trade mods and trade damage. Yes, very well played for Hafiz there. And we're going to interview with Hafiz, so stay tuned. I'm back and I'm joined once again by Mohamed Hafiz from Indonesia who has won his top 8 match to move on to the top 4 in a very strong fashion I think. Uh, congratulations Hafiz. Uh, thank you, uh, Matthew. So I think in game 1, you kind of had the advantage in the early start. You saw that the Smeagol Spore was coming, you you managed to play around it, but did you maybe forgot forget that uh, Grassy Terrain was halving Budo's damage? Uh, actually, not. Uh, you know, uh, that's not actually my play. I just want to turn this Smeagol so it cannot uh, do its significance anymore. Yeah, but I think towards the end there, we saw you actually leave your Arcanine open to the... Sorry, you, you left your Nihiligo open Nihiligo. to the Arcanine Budos, and it got a KO, because it was out of grassy terrain. Did you maybe... Uh, yeah, forgot I'm a little bit, uh, forgot about that. The grassy terrain mechanic? Yeah. Yeah, so that was a bit unfortunate. But I think we saw in Game 2 and Game 3, you made very strong adjustments. So I think by after Game 1, you were pretty sure he wasn't going to bring Smeagol anymore, right? Yep, uh, 
down because uh, it can be shut down by my Mandy bus. So I think uh, he will not uh, lead with Smeagol anymore. Yeah, I think in game three you made very strong adjustments. You actually, you st I think in game game one and two your Mandy bus wasn't doing that much. I didn't stopping Smeagol, and also your Nine Eagle was getting shut down by the Akanai. So we saw in game three you actually chose to ch to swap both out of your team, and you, you actually did very well in return because you saw he kept trying to get your Nine Eagle with the Budos, try trying to knock off your Lele, and you just. You just left your buzzword in and it was just so much damage that you couldn't handle. Yep, uh, I know that uh, his uh, Ego and Arcanine uh, are uh, his uh, main threat to my team. The buzz, so yeah, because I think they are, the only, they are the only two things that can handle your buzzword. Yep, uh, that's why uh, I, I need to protect my Lele. So it can be a revenge killer later uh, if uh, his Pokemon uh, left with uh, Neil Ego and uh, Arcanine. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Pro I think from game one, were you already aware that the Arcanine was holding the assault vest? Nah, uh, I'm not aware. I think it, it's a very variant. Oh, so I think you caught, caught you off guard when you survived the yep. power gem. Yeah, but I think game one, you survived with just a sliver and it was yeah. very crucial. But then came back the bu the Budos. So but then the end, but again, again, because you didn't know in game one, it caught you off guard. But then you made very strong adjustments in two and three. Yeah. So uh, uh, after that, uh, he can su uh, he could survive uh, my power gem. I think. Uh, it should, uh, I guess, it, it should be uh, a surface variant. Mm -hmm. uh, he also saw both the snow and the budo, so yeah, considering all the options he has, and you didn't see the berry either. Yeah, so again, very well played there by Havitz. Yeah. Moving on to top four against the winner of uh, Joel and Justin. So I think you're, you're going to be able to sit down and watch their match on stream. So uh, good luck with the match as well. Thank you. We will see you in top four, and we will be back with the next topic set played between Justin Ng and Joel Lee. So stay tuned.